What's up everyone, my name is Marie, welcome to my channel and welcome to another speed build. So for today's video, as you can see, I'm back in Henford on Bagley and for this build I'm actually building in the winter time, which I haven't done yet for um, for this world and I just, I don't know why, I, I'm totally aware of the fact that I am getting ahead of myself, fall has literally just started and I felt the need to build a wintry cottage for some reason. I have no clue why, I can't tell you why, but I just really had the urge, I felt the urge to build a wintry cottage. So that's what I did. And I also really wanted to explore Henford on Bagley in the winter time because I haven't seen it snowy just yet. So yeah, that was something new for me. And I think that this world looks so pretty in the snow, it's just, so cutesy and wholesome and perfect for Christmassy builds, which isn't going to be for a while. Like I just said, I do realize that fall has only just started. Usually I only build in the snow around winter time or just when when Christmas is coming up or just, you know, for Christmassy builds, stuff like that, or just regular wintry builds around Christmas time. That's usually the only time I'll ever build in the snow. That was my cat. You could probably just hear her. Um, but yeah, I just really felt the need to build a snowy cottage because I needed a change of pace. So I thought that this would be fun just to get in the mood for the cooler season that's coming up. And also where I am, I live in the Netherlands and the weather has been super cold lately. So yeah, I was actually quite cold as I was building this. So I definitely felt the need to just build something snowy and I had so much fun with this. I really love the shape of this cottage. I really like how the shape turned out. I think it's very cutesy, very cozy looking. I didn't decorate it for Christmas, obviously. I, um, I didn't go that far, so it's not decorated for Christmas. However, I did wanna try and keep the winter theme going on the interior for this build as well. So what I mean by that is I kind of went for more cooler colors um, instead of a warmer color scheme. Whereas if I were to build a Christmassy cottage, I would probably go for a very warm and cozy interior. I mean, the interior for this build is still cozy, but it's definitely more on the cooler side which I had a lot of fun with. I ha I used um, more darker colors and yeah, just like I said, some more cooler toned colors and I think that it turned out very cozy. And as you can see for the windows, I did use that, um, that large rounded window from the industrial loft kit at first. I think I swapped it out. Yeah, I did. I did swap it out for a window from Cottage Living with shutters. I just thought that that was a little bit more appropriate for this build um, because I didn't really want it to be modern in any way. I really wanted it to be a cottage. I wanted it to be cutesy. So that window in the end didn't really suit this house. However, I do like how it looks, but it wasn't just, it just wasn't really um, good for the whole vibe that I was trying to go for. So I got rid of it in the end. And uh, yeah, you can see that this house has a lot of bump outs. The floor plan is a bit messy, but that makes it very characteristic in my opinion. I really had a lot of fun with this floor plan. And I'm pretty sure that this house has two bedrooms. However, I am not exactly sure. I built this house, I think I finished this house last week or so, so I'm really not exactly sure what I did for the bedroom situation. So I'm sure I will remember it shortly, but we just have to wait for that to happen, I guess. Um, yeah, you can see that I was messing around with the wallpaper. I also used some base game windows on this build. I'm not sure if they are the recolored ones, but I'm pretty sure they are, um, which is really nice. I still can't get over the fact that we got over a thousand new swatches for base game items. I'm so excited about that, especially the windows and the kitchen counters and whatnot. So yeah, I was really excited to see that. And I think that these base game windows with the shutters are from base game. Well, I mean, I know they're from base game, but I think that they are recolored ones. However, I'm not sure. But if they're not, they still look, uh, they still look quite nice in my opinion. 
Um, but in a little while here, I will get started on the landscaping. And at some point I actually realized that I really needed to, uh, to just have the snow melt for a second. I changed the season real quick and I made the world go back to quote unquote normal. So without any snow, because I did want to make sure that the landscaping also looks nice when there is no snow around. And when there is snow in The Sims 4, then you can't really put down any terrain paint or I mean, you can, but you can't see it. So that makes it a little bit difficult to do that. Um, so I just quickly change the season and change the weather real quick to just do a little bit of landscaping just to make sure that um, you can go ahead and place this build in your game and then it would still look good in any season because usually what I do for snowy builds is I just uh, don't spend too much time on a landscaping and uh, I will fix it as I go and just not really pay any attention to um, to the terrain paint but for this one I really didn't want to cut that corner and I just really wanted to make sure that it would look good in any weather in any season. So you can see that uh, I have the snow melt for a second and then I just kind of went crazy with the landscaping. I used a whole, a whole bunch of debug plants obviously as I always do because they're free and they're pretty and they match the world the world landscaping around the lot, if that makes sense, just so perfectly. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. That was my cat again. I don't know what she wants, but she is <laughs> being a little bit noisy. I also made sure to place down a pond because I thought that would be cute. And I always really like how the ponds freeze over. I think that that looks so cute in the winter time. So I did make sure to place a pond on this lot. So you can see that I'm doing that and uh, I'm just playing around with some terrain paint as well, just to make sure that everything is nicely painted and just looks nice and natural. And I also, um, I was also messing around creating a little bit of a pathway. I wasn't sure how to do that. I was struggling with that a little bit, but I figured it out in the end. And you can also see that this house has a lot of doors to the outside. I went a little bit crazy with that. I was working off of a reference picture for the facade of the house. I let go of that picture quite fast, so it ends up looking nothing like that um, that reference picture at all. But that house did have a couple of doors in the front as well, so I figured I would do that for this cottage. I thought that that would look very nice. So we have the front door, obviously, and then we also have a little door that leads into the kitchen. And um, there is another door that leads to a back porch off of the kitchen as well. So the kitchen does have two doors, both to the front porch and to the back porch, which could be, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit excessive, but I just thought it looked really cute. And I liked that it was all symmetrical like that. And I just thought it was nice. So yeah, the kitchen ends up having two doors, which is crazy, um, but I still like how it looks. But you'll see that once we move on to the interior. But yeah, you can see that I'm just um, going crazy with the landscaping, placing a whole bunch of plants, which it looks really cute right now as well. So it's kind of sad that in a second here, you won't be able to see any of these plants anymore because they will be all um, dead and in winter mode, basically. Um, but yeah, I actually also made sure to place down a couple of farming plots because I thought that that would be, uh, that would be cute. This is a cottage in Hanford on Backley after all, and I wasn't really going to place an animal shed or a chicken coop or anything because for one, I didn't really have the space for it. I mean, I could have made the space for it. This lot is pretty big, but I didn't really want to. So I did decide to place down um, some gardening plots because I thought that that would be cute. And I think that the oversized crops work in any season. They're not bound to specific seasons, I don't think. Whereas the normal crops in this game actually are um, bound to specific seasons. But I don't think that goes for the, uh, the oversized crops. I could be wrong there, but I'm pretty sure um, that's what it is. And you can't actually see the farming plaza anymore at this point because um, there is snow again and uh, they're all over snowed. Is that how you say it? Probably not. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of snow on top of them basically. And I just think that it looks very cute. I mean, even though you can't really see the landscaping anymore, I still think that it looks nice and cozy and natural and 
yeah, I think it kind of fits in with the rest of the world. So after the landscaping and such, we are moving on to the interior of the house. And um, right now I'm just gonna have to sit here and look what I'm doing because I don't actually quite remember at this point. I'm, I'm sure it will, it will come to me any minute now, but I don't exactly remember. I do remember this hallway though. I think it's very cute. It's just this little L-shaped hallway and then we have a door to a full bathroom off of this hallway and obviously a door that leads to the living area. And I really enjoyed placing this little wall item from Snowy Escape with the little mittens and the little shoes and the little scarf hanging from it. I think that that item is so cute and so perfect for wintry builds. However, I don't like that the design is so specific. Like the hanger for the wall is like, it's like made out of little mountains and it's really cute. It's perfect for Mount Kamarebi, but for a build that's not in Mount Kamarebi, it's just, it doesn't really suit anything else. So that's a bit of a shame. So I kind of tried to um, hide that little hanger. I, I kind of just merged it with a couple of overhead cabinets, as you can see, to kind of hide the little mountainy design. Um, and I think it kind of works. So I think it looks really cute. And then after that, we are moving on to the living area. So I did make sure to put a fireplace. And as you can see, I am definitely going for a more cool color scheme. I'm using this wallpaper from Parenthood with the black or dark gray. I think it's supposed to be black paneling, which I've never actually, well, I'm sure I have used it at some point in some build, but I can't actually remember. So I thought that it looked very nice um, paired with this swatch of the flooring from Cottage Living. I just, I think that it looks really cute. This flooring, as you can see, also has some cool tones in it. Um, it's, it's a richer brown, but it's definitely on the cooler side of things. It has a little bit of gray in it as well. So I don't know. I thought it combined very nicely with this swatch of the wallpaper from Parenthood. And I'm using this light gray, kind of icy looking couch, in my opinion, which I combined with this chair from, what's it from? I think it's from Cats and Dogs. And I think that it looks really cute. I love the little throw blanket. And I also love the little flowery design on it. I just think that it looks so cute. So then I just cluttered up the coffee table a little bit. I'm using this coffee table from Parenthood. No, not from Parenthood. It's from Jungle Adventure. And it doesn't really go stylized with the rest of the furniture, but I still think that it looks really nice. I love the colors in that coffee table. I like how the coffee table just kind of lightens up the whole living room a bit because it was starting to get a little bit more on the darker side, but then I chose a, a creamy colored rug and then that lighter colored coffee table. And I just think that it looks really cute. It really lightens up the place a bit. And it also kind of matches with a fireplace in a way. And I just think that this, um, that this living room ends up looking very, very cute. So then I placed down a bookcase as well, which I cluttered up with some extra books and just a little light as well. And then um, after that, I think we're either moving on to the kitchen or to the dining room. Um, I think we're doing the kitchen. Yeah, we're doing the kitchen first. And I think what I did was I ended up picking these, yeah, I ended up picking the countertops from Jungle Adventure, which at first I was thinking that they were a little bit too modern, but I really liked the color of this swatch for these counters. I thought that they looked perfect and they are kind of modern, but they also still kind of look rustic in my opinion. And that's what sold me on them for, for this specific build. I think they still look good, even though they're not exactly the vibe that I was trying to go for for this house, but I still think it looks really nice. So maybe the kitchen is a bit more updated or recently renovated. I'm not exactly sure. It doesn't look all that modern. But the appliances do look kind of modern, so I don't know, maybe the kitchen was recently renovated. Um, oh, now I'm remembering what I did. I actually put the, um, the dining table in the kitchen, so there is no specific dining room for this house because the dining table is in the kitchen. And then 
The other little room off of the um, off of the living room, I actually turned that into a study area and a skill building room. Now I'm remembering. It took me a while, but now I'm remembering. So yeah, I really like how this kitchen ended up looking. I used these lighter green blinds from Cottage Living just to add a little bit of color to the space without warming it up too much because like I already explained, I definitely try to go for more cool colors for this build and I think that I succeeded. I think it looks very icy without looking too cold. Like it still feels cozy and warm even though the colors aren't necessarily very warm. I don't know, I just, I still think that it looks very nice and inviting and cozy in here. So I cluttered up this kitchen quite a bit. I left the corner counter free of clutter so your Sims can use that to actually cook. Um, and that all works perfectly fine. And um, yeah, I also think I placed a little coat hanger or like shelving unit behind the dining table because there are a couple of doors leading to the outside area. So I figured this kitchen also kind of functions as a mudroom in, in some way. Um, so I just placed a nice little shelving unit and I cluttered it up with some boxes and some shoes and whatnot. And it just looks really cozy and kind of realistic in my opinion. And then after the kitchen, we are moving on to the study area. So I use this desk from Base Game. I barely ever use this desk, but I think it's so cute. It's very messy and very old looking and it has a lot of like random little books lying around. And I just think that it's so cute. And I really did want to include a computer for this house. So um, yeah, I just placed a computer on the desk and then I put a little wooden bench in the nook um, next to the staircase if that makes sense and I put a couple of throw pillows on there and then I also end up placing a little end table and I um, decorated that with some different um, little knickknacks and decorations and I also end up placing a knitting basket and a cross stitching basket as well. So I definitely figured that one of the sims living here could be into both knitting and cross stitching and they're kind of creative in that sense and yeah, they would just sit here on that little bench um, next to the staircase and then they will sit there and just work on their creations. I thought that would be cute. I also placed a little ottoman um, that kind of looks like a little, I don't know what to call it, a little footstool. I think that's what you call it. I'm not exactly sure. But then we also have one full bathroom downstairs and um, I put a shower tub combination in here because it fits. And I also put a, um, a toilet and a sink, obviously. And then as you can see, the color scheme in the bathroom is also very cool toned, which I really, really like. I love that light blue swatch of the mirror and then that exact same light blue swatch for the medicine cabinet. I love how they match. I just, I just think it looks so cute. And then after the bathroom, we are moving on to, um, to the second floor. Now I did furnish the full bathroom on the second floor off camera because I figured it was a little bit too repetitive. Um, but after the speed build, I will obviously show you that little bathroom in the, um, in the short house store that will do. So for this upstairs area, obviously I, um, I decorated a master bedroom. And again, I really tried to go for the more cooler, icy tones in this bedroom. I used these nightstands from, um, what's it called? Jungle Adventure. They match the coffee table downstairs actually, but I did use it in a different swatch. Um, and I think it looks really cute. I love that gray swatch and how it matches with the paneling on, um, on the wallpaper. I just think it looks so nice. And then I used a bed and a dresser, both from Seasons, so they're all, so they are very matchy matchy and very cutesy. I've been really into the bedroom furniture sets from Seasons lately. I don't know why, but I've been obsessed with this dresser lately, and the same goes for this bed. However, the swatches for this bed are a bit difficult to work with. They definitely don't always work. But for this house, they actually worked, or at least this swatch worked, and I thought that it looked really, really cute. Um, and yeah, I just cluttered up the dresser with some different decorations and I think it ends up looking quite cute. Um, I am a little bit distracted at this point because the funniest thing happened when I was building this, um, this house, 
I actually recorded the last part, which is the part that we're looking at right now. I accidentally recorded it with my face cam turned on. So I put all the footage together, sped it up and rendered it. And then when I played the video to check it, um, I realized that I have a sped up face cam in this part of the video. And it's so funny because I can just see myself sitting there building and I wasn't aware of the fact that the camera was on because it wasn't supposed to be on, obviously. So I'm just sitting there looking very angry, looking very concentrated and um, and building this house. It's actually, it's so funny. And apparently I talk to myself a lot. Obviously I didn't record any sound, so I couldn't really hear what I was saying. And also this footage is sped up like 700 times. So I wouldn't really be able to hear what I was saying anyway. But uh, yeah, apparently I talk to myself a lot or I talk to my cat. That's also possible. I'm not quite sure. But uh, I also realized that I look very angry when I'm building, but that's probably just because I'm so concentrated and just really um, being nitpicky about everything. I don't know. I just, I think it's so funny that I accidentally put on my face cam and the way I look when I'm building, it's just, it's so funny to me. It's so awkward. I love it. I really, I just, I laughed so hard when I saw this. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I also decorated a kid's bedroom in here. It's really full, kind of cluttered, but I think it's so cute. I merged the bed with the um, with a bookcase and I just think it looks so cozy. And then the other bedroom, the smallest one, which is actually really, really small, I furnished that one for a toddler. So yeah, this bedroom is definitely very small, but it could still work for a regular single bed as well. I mean, it would just be very crammed. You can't really fit anything else in here besides a single bed and a dresser, I don't think. And maybe like a plant or a lamp, I don't really know, but I'm sure that it could work. It's just a very small bedroom, but I mean, Sims don't really need that much space in their bedrooms, so I think that it would be fine. But yeah, the colors in the toddler's bedroom are also very cool toned and kind of icy but also kind of cutesy at the same time because it is a toddler's bedroom. So I still wanted it to be colorful in some way. So I tried my best and I think that it ends up looking so cute. I love how I used this, um, this bookcase from my first pet stuff. I barely ever use it. I always forget it exists, but for some reason for this build, I use it and I think it just looks really cute. And it totally goes with this bedroom in the sense that is a little bit mismatched in here, um, but I really love that about it. And I really love that for toddler bedrooms. I also made this makeshift little changing table out of a dresser and an ottoman, as you can see. And I think it works perfectly, but yeah, this bedroom is definitely very, very cramped, but it is really cute in my opinion. And then after the toddler's bedroom, we are moving on to the outside of the house and I didn't really do much else than what I already did. I just placed a couple of furniture items and stuff on the small porches. They're all very small, so I couldn't really fit a whole bunch of things on there. I just made sure to place some outdoor bins as well as a, a small little dining table on the smallest little front porch off of the um, off of the kitchen. I thought that would make sense. So you have a nice spot to sit and eat in the summertime. And I also placed a little picnic bench outside right by um, right by the farming plots. But then that's actually it. So let's just jump right into the game and I'll show you the house in real time. So here we have the house in the game, in the snow, and I just think it looks so dreamy. I am so happy with the way that this house turned out and I just think it looks so cute. So as you can see over here, we have the little pond that's frozen over at this point. And over here, we have the little gardening plot and a picnic bench right there. And then this is one of the small porches off of the kitchen where I made sure to place an outdoor dining table. And then over here on the other side, this is where the front door is located. So when we walk into the house, we have this little entryway. It's very small, but here, as you can see, I placed that little wall mounted hanger with the mittens and the scarf and the shoes and stuff. And I just kind of 
hid the little design of it by placing these cabinets over top. And I think that it kind of works. I mean, obviously it clips a little bit, but you're not really ever gonna look at it from this angle, I don't think. So I think it looks really cute. And then for the rest of the entryway, we just have a little chair where you can sit down and put on your shoes and another little coat rack by the front door. And then off of the entryway, we also have this full bathroom, which is nothing special. It's a very basic bathroom, but it works. Then through this door, we have the living area. And I think that this living area is so cozy. Even though I used cool toned colors, I think that it just looks very cozy and very welcoming. So we have this fireplace with a TV over it and we have this couch and this chair. And I also made sure to put this little basket with the throw pillows and a blanket in it. And it's just, it's so cozy in my opinion. Then over here, we have a bookcase and just some different decorations. And then over here through this archway, we have the study slash skill building room. My sim is just hanging out here, as you can see, because I was just play testing the build. Um, but I put a little bench back here and I also put this nice little end table and some skill building items. And then we have the staircase, obviously. But before we go upstairs, we have the kitchen and dining over here. And I also think that this kitchen and dining area is so cute and cozy. It's also sort of a mudroom, as you can see, because it does have two doors to the outside. So I placed this little shelving unit with some shoes and then we have a small dining table over here. We have the nicely decorated kitchen. It's not too cluttered, but it definitely still looks very lived in and very cutesy in my opinion, at least. And then back here, we have the small little back porch where I kind of just tucked away these uh, outdoor bins. I thought that would be appropriate. And then off of the study area, we actually also have this tiny little porch that leads into the side yard, if you will. So yeah, a lot of porches, a lot of doors to the outside. When we go upstairs, we have this very small little landing area. Area. And then at the end of the hall, we have the master bedroom. This is definitely the biggest bedroom of the house. It's very icy and again, very cool toned as you can see, but I still think it looks very cozy. Then over here in this little nook, we have the dresser with some different decorations on top and uh, yeah, nothing else really. Then over here, we have the kids bedroom and I feel like this is by far the coziest bedroom. Wouldn't it be so nice to just lay on this bed and just read a book? I just feel like it would be so cozy tucked away in this little corner right here. I don't know. I just, I would have loved a bedroom like this as a kid. And then they have a wardrobe over here and a nice little play area over in this corner. And then over here we have the toddler's bedroom. This one is again, very icy in a way, but still very colorful. I use a lot of pastel colors for this bedroom. I place this bed from Eco Lifestyle and this makeshift changing table out of a dresser and an ottoman. And they also have a couple of toys. I couldn't really fit too much in here, but they do have this blarfy in the corner and then if they want to play with some toys out of the toy box they can just come over here and use this toy box i felt like that wouldn't be too much of an issue and then we also have another full bathroom upstairs this one does not have a shower tub combination this one only has a shower and i also made sure to place a potty for the toddler in this one but yeah that's actually it for this build so this wintery cottage is up on the gallery and it comes in at just over seventy-six thousand and two hundred simoleons so once again, quite expensive, but I mean, it's not a surprise anymore at this point. My bills are always expensive, though I feel like you could save up for this one, but it goes on a 30 by 20 lot in Henford on Bagley, but I'm sure it would also look cute in different worlds. But if you want to place it in Henford on Bagley, it does go on a 30 by 20 lot, but that's actually it for this video. So I really hope that you enjoyed this build. You can obviously go ahead and download it off the gallery. Like I just showed you my username on the gallery is Simmery Sims. You can also follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. If you'd like my username on there is Simmery Sims as well. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, feel free to do so. And if you want to be notified of every single time I upload a video, just click that little bell icon and you should be fine. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.